Fire in the campground. We were not prepared. Welcome to the channel. I'm Paul. And I'm Liz. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And sometimes pushing past fear is a big deal. We just experienced a fire in a campground. We realized from <laughs> that experience that we were not prepared. At all. And I think this is really an important video. So to set the scene for you, we were in a remote area. It was a mile narrow, windy road into our campground, only one way in. Yeah, Rancho Oso, for those of you who know the place. Yeah, in Santa Barbara, but only one way in, uh, one way out. And at eight o'clock at night uh, the other day, I opened up the door and I said, that doesn't look right. No, there was this big orange glow in the sky and it was like, that's yeah. too big to be a campfire. It's not a campfire. So what we did was we got in the truck and we actually put Mango in the truck too and we drove down. It wasn't very far. I mean, it was, what, a quarter mile? Yeah. And what went through our minds, what it was with some brush burning. Yeah. And uh, we are in a tinderbox. Let you know that, that California is definitely a tinderbox. We've heard all stories and I'm sure you have too fire, wind, and next thing you know, a whole hill is on fire. We didn't have a plan in place for, for that type of uh, situation. And, and uh, They actually closed that road and so they could allow the fire trucks to come in. Yeah, while we were down there kind of gawking at the fire, uh, one of the rangers drove up and, and saw us and said, the gate is closed, you can't leave. I understand why they did that. It's, you know, it's a narrow road coming in and the fire trucks hadn't arrived yet. So they didn't want anybody going out that road and, and causing a problem for the fire trucks trying to get in. We realized that we need a plan and so we've made one and we're gonna share that with you because I think whether you're camping for the weekend or you're full timers, Every time you go to a campground, you need to check a few boxes to make sure that you're prepared because we have heard about fires, and I'm sure you have too, where you're running for your life. And we, if we'd had a plan in place, I think we would have felt better because what went through our mind was, you know, are we going to have to abandon our camper? What are we going to do? Right. And we were prepared to ba abandon our camper, oh, of yeah. course. You yeah, know. we would have left it behind. I mean, uh, you know, the camper's replaceable. Lives are not. So we have some tips for you. The first tip is when you arrive at a campground, find out where that emergency exit is. Almost every campground has an emergency exit. Now it'll be a gate that's locked, but at least know where it is, know how to escape the back way. In the possibility that, that the fire came, the if the fire came across blocking that yeah. road, you want to know, you want to have a, another way out. Right. And that brings us, you know, to the point that you may need to leave your rig behind. So you need to have a go bag packed. And what should be in your go bag? Passports, your driver's license, your ID, any important papers that you have. Cash. Yeah, you want to take cash if you've got it on hand. And a little bit of food and water, maybe a handkerchief to cover your face. Yeah, a face covering, yeah. Yeah, that would be a good thing if you've got them, and everybody's got those nowadays. <laughs> right. <laughs> Medications, eyeglasses, contacts, dog food if you have a pet. But that's something that you actually should have packed and ready no matter where you are because you don't know. The next tip is listen to the people in charge of the campground, the rangers, and, and uh, well, that's it. Listen to the rangers. Yeah, let them be your guide as for what to do. They're going to have a plan in place. Most likely they've practiced and run through some drills yeah. for this exact situation. Yeah, I'm sure this isn't their first rodeo. <laughs> the next tip is to stick together. And that's actually something we did right. Yeah. When we went down just to even look at the fire, we brought Mango with us because we didn't know if it was going to go crazy. You want to keep your family together. You don't want to have to, in the midst of what could erupt into a crazy, chaotic situation, you don't want to be looking for members. Yeah, you, you definitely want to know where everybody is at every moment. I carry a cordless grinder with me with a, and I have these four and a half inch metal cutting discs. I could cut through a chain in less than a minute with that. You know, if it came to that, yeah. you know, we, we ob obviously want to listen to the officials first, but if all yeah. craziness broke out and you just needed to get out the back way, the fire was coming, yeah. carry 
a grinder or bolt cutters because all the gates we've seen are padlocked. Yeah, I don't carry it for emergencies. I just carry it because it's a tool that I brought with me and, and it comes in handy. Once you have lots on. of tools. I have lots of tools, <laughs> yeah. But that's one, that's, that's an important one. I have, I have actually a corded grinder and a cordless grinder. For this one, you would just want a cordless one yeah. or, or the bolt cutters, just something that would go through a padlock yeah. because you can't rely on having electricity there. That's the first thing they're going to do if a fire is coming is they're going to shut the power off anyway. Right. We'll put a link to uh, Paul's cordless grinder. And any cordless grinder that will take a four and a half inch metal cutting disc, it's got a five eighths mandrel bit, uh, hole in it. Hopefully it'll never come to that, but you know, we didn't like the idea of being trapped and not having a way out and you know, who knows what could have happened and there not have been an official letting us out of the gate. One thing you want to do when you arrive at a new campsite is rake up any loose weeds or debris that might catch fire and keep the area around your rig clear of that type of uh, flammable debris. Let's talk about a fire in the rig. 20,000 RVs catch fire every single year. We have seen the aftermath of that. Your rig can go up like that. Yes. So we have some tips for you for inside. Yeah, you want to keep fire extinguishers handy. We received a very important tip from one of our viewers, hi Trish, where she had a fire in her kitchen and she couldn't see her hand in front of her. Yeah, and, and it was a matter of seconds. I mean, right, so you need to be able to feel your way to where that fire extinguisher is because you may not be able to see it. Make sure that everyone in your rig knows where that fire extinguisher is. So if you're cooking in the kitchen, Rule number one is don't ever leave a pot unattended on the stove. That's right, and actually if you have a campfire, don't leave your campfire unattended either, ever. If, if it's burning or, or if it hasn't been doused, somebody needs to be near it at all times. Try and avoid using a space heater if you have to use it. Try and avoid using an extension cord. It draws a lot of amps, and amps is heat. Too many amps for too small an extension cord is a bad thing. It can cause the extension cord to melt, and which would cause a, a short, which could cause a fire. So let's talk about extension cords. They come in different wire gauge. The standard household um, extension cord is going to probably be a 16 gauge wire. There's a, the next step up from that would be a 14 gauge wire. The next step up from that would be a 12 gauge wire. And the 12 gauge is what you'd want for a space heater. Yeah, right? I, you would, want... I would use a 12 gauge if I were powering up a, st a space heater. Yeah. Always check your smoke detector. You want to test them. You want to make sure that they're working. A huge thing for people like us, especially full timers, is to know where you are. Now that may sound obvious, but if I had to call 911 right now, I might be fumbling around looking for the address of where we are. We move every two to three weeks. So we know people, and this is probably something we should start doing, who every time they move, they write their address down on a card or they enter it into their phone so they know right where they are because you might need to be telling 911. Yeah, or put it on a post-it note and stick it on a cabinet door where you, you will know where it's at. Even if you don't have service on your cell phone, surprisingly, 911 could actually still work. So do give it a try. And of course, you will need to know your address. So what fire safety tips do you have? Let us know in the comments. And we'll see you in the next video. See ya. Oh no. Fire. <laughs>